Alright, hello people. I'm the dude, and this is Let's Play Cortex Command. Uh, I love that intro, that's why I played it. It's one of my favorite intros that I've seen in a game in a long time. There's one really odd thing, though. I mean, you give this little story picture book thing of the past of what happened, and then it says something like, something to the effect of, and then intergalactic peace was attained. And then you get this giant guitar riff. <laughs> the timing on that has to be just completely and totally off. I'm not really sure what that's about, but... I really like that song. <clears throat> and uh, as usual, I bring you a game that's not well known, but that I like quite a bit. This is kind of like... How do I describe this? It's kind of like a mix between Worms and Terraria. You have the base building and the digging and that kind of stuff from Terraria, but you have the combat from Worms, where you're lobbing grenades and missiles and stuff like that and shooting dudes and anyways you'll see uh, there's a campaign I'm not gonna be doing that right now maybe later I'm gonna do a scenario battle uh, I don't need to do the tutorial mission I've already done it these are all different types of scenarios you can do I'm gonna be doing the skirmish defense one this one's basically just they send you everything they have just waves and waves and waves of enemies it's kinda like survival mode I guess uh, these are the different maps. Desert One, Tutorial Bunker, First Signs. There's a whole bunch of different ones. I'm not sure if I have them all unlocked yet. I might not. But the one I'm going to be doing today is Grass Plains 1. Because I like this map. <laughs> it's fairly flat, which is nice. Uh, these are the different control types. I'm player 1. I want to use the keyboard and mouse. So I'm going to put that there. Team 2 is going to be the CPU. I'm not going to have a Team 3 or Team 4 at the moment maybe later it just makes the map more hectic because you'll have enemies coming from pretty much every direction you already do have them coming from every direction you'll have more enemies coming from every direction uh, when you start scenario mode you have funds at the top here I have 6,000 and you build up your base yourself so this is the terraria part you build a base that's hopefully going to be able to defend your uh, your brain which is basically you this thing right here from the enemy's assault so it's kinda like tower defense in that way kind of too I don't know whatever it's hard to describe but it's really fucking fun <laughs> I love this game I'm probably not as addicted to this as I was to Minecraft but fairly close it is that fun and I think we'll do it right here this is gonna be the entrance to our base it is gonna go straight down quite a ways Uh, probably... That's probably good. Yeah, that's good. And we need one of those T-junction type deals. These are the different parts to your base. These, these are the pre-built ones. The section I'm under right now. There's also... There's bits, so you can build the parts yourself. If you want to. It takes a long time. <laughs> I mean, you're building the backgrounds, the foregrounds, all the little chunks to each of the stairways and walls and all that. Takes a long time. I like using the pre-build. This one right here, are this one's bits that move. Basically like doors, conveyor belts, stuff like that. This one right here lets you land your dropship inside your base instead of landing it outside. I don't use the dropship much because it's expensive as hell. <laughs> so, yeah. I won't be using that. Uh, the tutorial tiles, these are just special tiles that were in the tutorial level. They put them in the game so you could use them if you wanted to. Uh, let's see, modules, where is the T-junction, there we go, that is what I need, and yes, that, like that, and I think I need the stairs, where are the stairs at, there we go, kind of like that, Uh, no, I want the long piece. Yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. And I need the T-junction again. There we go. Uh, this base might look a little funky if you actually play this game. Usually people build most of their base above ground. And the only thing they build underground is the, the place that houses their brain. They'll build a room for their brain just underground. 
I don't do it that way. I build everything underground. That's just the kind of crazy I am. I've tried above ground bases and they just don't work out very well for me. This design right here is the only one I've found that lasts for any amount of time in survival <laughs> in this scenario mode. <clears throat> if I try anything else, I tend to get owned. Let's see. Where is the vertical one? There we go. That right there. Good, good. And then I need the stairs again. Actually, I need the one that goes to the right and left first. And uh, there's one. <clears throat> and there's the other one. I might have built this too low. I might not be able to get the stairs in. Which is going to suck. Because they're key to my plan. No, they're not really key, but... They're just nice. If they manage to get this far into the base, the having another set of stairs will help protect the brain. It's not that big a deal. Not like that. And let's see if we can get the stairs in. This stuff right here you might not be able to build through. I'm not sure. No, it looks like I can. Looks like I can. Alright, good, good. One straight piece, and we're done with the base part. Right there. There we go. Okay, this is my general base design. I will switch it up if I do another video, but this is this is basically the best one that I've found. It works extremely well in this infinite survival mode thing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and build the bits and bobs real quick. Where is the platform? Needs the plat. Yes, this. Give me this. Okay, right about. That's actually too high. Right about there. Like that. And then. That might be a little bit too low. We'll say right there. And. Alright, good. Uh, when I when I want more units, I'll be able to place a few, a handful, in this starting little creation bit. But then, uh, once I get into the game, I'll be mining the gold. This yellow stuff is gold. And uh, I'll be dropping in more units and, you know, weapons and stuff like that. When I drop them in, I don't want to drop them at ground level. If I do, the enemy will be here, they'll be at ground level, and they'll just shoot to shit anything I drop in. So, this little platform up here... It basically lets me have a really high point to drop my equipment in. It'll land up here and the enemy won't attack it. Basically. I'll drop in the middle here. Any ground troops, if they try to shoot at it, will hit the bottom of this right here. They won't hit the, the troops up here. And also I can set up I can set up turrets on these two levels and they'll fire out at enemies. You'll see that whenever I get into the game. Uh, let's see. Usually I build a couple of these, but I don't think I need them. I think I'm going to change that bit of my design. I don't really need them. This right here, though, this little block right here, is, is it's wonderful. It's amazing. This is key to my, my survival right here, this one little block. Basically what it does is it lets you... Uh, it, it lets you bottleneck areas, basically. Whenever the enemies come to attack me, they'll, they'll come running up here. They'll uh, they'll try to get past this area because I'll have defenses up here. Got shooting and a couple of walls. Stuff like that. Whenever they finally get into the base, they'll have to fall down this tunnel. And they'll, they'll bottleneck right here. The debris and bits of dead people and all that will all bottleneck right here. And to get through to these areas to the sides, they'll have to get down on their knees and crawl. Which slows them down. And it makes it harder for them to get through this area. Really nice to have. I don't think I can put one right here. Can I? That no, doesn't matter. One right there. That's good. And this side over here doesn't really matter. Something like that. 
And we want space on this edge because I'm going to have a soldier down here. And we'll go ahead and make this all the way down to there. There we go. Let's see. One, two, three, four, no, four, there we go, five, one right there, good, good, and then our brain is going to be right there, in that little open spot, uh, let's see, brains, <clears throat> this is the standard brain right here, this one you just stick to a wall and it stays there, the why did it switch categories? Uh, the brain robot is actually a robot that you can move around. If you want to have a mobile brain, there's not much point. I mean, at this point, my brain is as far down at the bottom down here, completely and totally defended as it can get. So there's no point in walking it around. That wouldn't help me at all. <clears throat> and then this brain right here, this is a fake. The enemy will go after it and try to destroy it. But I'm going to use this one. I guess it erases. Yeah, it erases the one you placed if you go back to that category, apparently. But whatever. That's fine. Uh, and I still need some... What are they called? Ballistic walls. These things are handy to have. Let's see, put one right there. Right there. And... There we go. Uh, these things right here, the enemy either has to dig through them or basically get stuck on them, which is what they usually do. Which is nice. It's just another thing that slows them down. And let's see. Uh, I need... I need my diggers. Mia. I like to use Mia because she's fast. Which is nice. She's quick on her feet. Uh, these these are the different units that you can use in the game. There's a ton of them. Uh, these robots are the robots in general are tougher than humans, but they're slower. Uh, they don't run as fast. They don't fly as fast. They just take more bullet damage. Uh, that one's a basic robot. That one's tougher. This one's a really weak one. These are dreadnoughts. They're basically the tanks of the game. They uh, they walk around on their four legs and just blast the crap out of stuff. They're gonna be my last line of defense down here. I have one right there, and one right there. <clears throat> if the enemy actually gets that far, they get this far into my base, they'll have a really tough time taking out the dreadnoughts. I'm not going to overuse dreadnoughts because they're expensive. They're not cheap. <coughs> uh, the small MG turret, it's just what it sounds like. It's a really small turret. Really cheap. I'm going to put one right there, and I'm going to put one right here. That'll be my first line of defense. They'll last quite a while, though. You'll see. This this design right here, it really bottlenecks them really well. They don't do a lot of damage when they when they fall down there. Uh, soldier Light, it's just a basic soldier unit. Soldier Heavy is a little bit tougher. Uh, the drone is... It's like this little killer robot guy. You set him on the ground, and he chases after enemies and tries to kill them with his claws. He's not very tough, but he does good damage. These blast runners, I love these little guys. You drop them, and they roll after enemies. And uh, if they get stuck on something, you can jump with them. You can bounce. So they kind of do like this. They'll roll, hit some, bounce. And then they'll roll into an enemy and explode. <laughs> so they're like little mobile bombs. They're one of my favorite units to mess around with. Of course, once the terrain gets all deformed and messed up, they're completely useless, basically. Uh, medic drone, he just heals your units, basically. I don't mess with the medic drone much. I just use my guys as cannon fodder, basically. They don't get healing. <laughs> uh, Gatling drone and Gatling turret. The Gatling turret, you set it on the ground, and it sits in that one spot and just blows enemy units up. That's basically what it does. I'm going to have one right there. And right here. And uh, the Gatling, what is the other one called? Gatling bot or whatever has legs. These drones right here can't move. They just sit where you put them. Whereas, there we go. Whereas the Gatling 
uh, bot or whatever it's called can actually walk around. It can't jump, it can't fly, so it'll still get stuck on terrain really easily. But it is mobile, which is good. Did I give her a digger? I gotta do that. I forgot to give them diggers. Diggers are tools. They let you dig into the ground. Uh, I'm gonna give her a medium digger because the heavy digger is ridiculously expensive. Not really sure why, but it is. Have a digger. There we go. Try not to fall into the ground. <laughs> if anyone get hit gets hit by anything in this game, they just instantly ragdoll. Their legs and arms just go flying everywhere. <laughs> fun to watch. Makes it a pain to play, but fun to watch. I think I need a couple of more of these. Yeah, I do. I did not make quite enough of them. There we go. Uh, let's see. Actors. Uh, the rest of the actors. The brown coats, they're like uber versions of the soldiers. They're just tougher. Especially this one. The brown coat heavy is a monster. He takes tons of punishment. I've had them walking around with no legs, arms missing, feet, hands missing. They just keep going. They're like the Terminator. <laughs> Uh, these are the humans down here. They all have special abilities. Dalford's just kind of there. I don't I don't know what his special ability is. Mia's really fast. Dimitri sees really far, so he's a good sniper. And scout. Uh, Brutus takes a lot of damage, but he's slow as all hell. Uh, Sandra makes the enemy soldiers kind of pause. She kind of confuses them. They won't shoot her immediately. And then Gordon takes a lot of bullet punishment, but he's not good against explosives. You see about equal amounts of both bullets and explosives, so he's kind of he's kind of like a trade-off. He's not really great, in my opinion. And then the skeleton zombies, the uh, undead faction at the bottom, they're just really cheap. That's what they are. They're cannon fodder, basically. Uh, I need a couple more, a couple more turrets. I might actually put Dreadnoughts right there. I don't know. Depending on how much money I have left, I might. Maybe. Turret right there. Turret right there. Yes. Uh, crap, I'm running out of money already. <clears throat> uh, I need my soldiers down here. Let's see, what can I afford? Usually I use brown coats, but I just don't have enough money for them. Let me use a soldier light. Yeah, I'll use a soldier light. Even the soldier light's pretty tough. Put him right there. Put this one right here. Good. Now I need some weapons for them. These are the different weapons in the game. There's a ton of them. <laughs> I'll play with most of them throughout the game. Uh, a lot of them are crap. A lot of them are just not worth the money. Like, the, the really expensive weapons tend to be crap because they're extremely hard to aim and they fire really, really slowly. If you hit anyone with them, they tend to die immediately. <laughs> but they're just, they're really hard to aim and they fire their firing rate is really slow. In general, the medium weapons are the best, the ones in the middle. Uh, this is the dummy faction. As far as I know, they're just that one dummy robot. The entire faction is just... Where'd he go? It's just these guys right here. Oh, apparently there's dreadnoughts and the turrets too. Okay. Mainly the, the dummy faction is these guys right here. These little crash dummy guys. They're really weak. Extremely weak. They die to pretty much anything. Uh, weapons. Probably my favorite out of the dummy faction. <clears throat> All the railgun weapons are good. Uh, the rail pistol, the nail gun, the repeater, uh, all those are pretty good. The nailer cannon. They're basically like really strong assault rifles, kind of. Except for the pistol. The pistol is a really strong pistol. Uh, the coalition faction, it has most of the weapons, but they're all pretty much standard stuff you would think they are. Like assault rifles, shotguns, pistols, galling guns, sniper rifles, flamethrower, stuff like that. The flat cannon is a beast of a gun. It shoots out like uh, <clears throat> it's not really a shotgun blast. It's more like a beanbag. But if that beanbag hits anything, they're just dead. It, it's over for them. They're toast. <laughs> uh, the missile launcher is ridiculously powerful. That's why it's so expensive. 
<clears throat> uh, the Ronin faction, I don't use their guns much. They seem to be mostly underpowered. The only ones I really like are the missile launcher. This is this is another different type of missile launcher. It launches chainsaws, and it is as cool as it sounds. And uh, that's really good, and the thumper is really good. Basically, it's just a single-shot handheld grenade launcher. You hit someone with that, they're screwed. They're toast. <laughs> Uh, it's probably about it for the ones I actually use. The the bombs are really good too, right here. Like the napalm bomb is just amazing. But anyways, I'm gonna give these guys down here auto shotguns. Auto shotguns at really close range, which is what this is. The enemy's gonna fall down here, hit the ground, have nowhere to go, and then have an auto shotgun right in their face. It's uh it's really high powered, really short range, really fast firing, really good for base defense basically. Where is my auto shotgun going? What the hell? Never seen that before. Interesting. The auto shotgun walked from right here to over here. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Huh. Okay. Uh, it looks like my base is pretty much made. I need some in these corners right here. But I don't have a lot of money left. So it's going to have to be something cheap. Let's see. Actors... How much are the 100? I don't even have enough for two of those. Jesus. Okay, I'm going to start with weapons, and then I'll just use the cheapest unit I can find. What weapon do I want there? I'd love to have another set of auto shotguns, but that's not going to happen. Uh, I could do just a basic assault rifle, I guess. Let's see, 65. 65 is probably too much. We'll just do a compact assault rifle. That right there. That right there. And it looks like they're going to have to be skeletons because I have no money left. Oops. Actors. Uh, let's see, 70. I can get two zombie. Zombie fat. Uh, half done clones, and they do not feature jetpacks nor armor, which doesn't matter inside my base. They don't need jetpacks. The armor would be nice. Uh, and it says they're armed with cheap weapons. Even, yeah. Well, this is a cheap weapon, so that'll work. Zombie fat. And last zombie fat. Right there. There we go. Okay. We are ready to rock. <coughs> Uh, yes, done building. Give me Mia. Pick up the digger. Start digging. Uh, the hole down right here, it's going to be twice as useful as it seems. It's, it's getting me down to the gold, obviously, but it's also going to be a trap for the enemies. They'll fall in here and get stuck. Or at least, ideally, they'll fall in here and get stuck. That's the plan. Needs to be fairly large at the top here. That's pretty good. And then I need to get get her out of here before the enemies show up. Basically, get going. Oh, they started on that side. Okay, that me is gonna get killed. I'll have to make another one. Not a big deal. I'll just make me a new one. The digger should still be there though, so I won't have to make a digger. Right now, I'm going to just let my base defenses do their thing, and I'm going to concentrate on building this side over here. This, uh, this hole over here. I'm going to get as far over here as I can, and then I'm going to dig straight down. As you can see, the digger can actually dig through base defenses. Eventually, they will start chewing through my defenses. Hello, first target. And dead. Took her head off. Looks like I just confettied her ass completely. There we go. Okay, keep going down. And my first victims have fell into my hole up here. <laughs> Basically these holes are another layer of base defense. When they fall into them like that, they become prime targets for bombs. I just drop bombs into the holes and just annihilate them. Which is fun. Fun times. probably low enough. 
Yeah, there we go. Then we're gonna start going this way. Uh, the enemy up there, they won't. They'll have a tr tough time getting through here, this area right here. They'll they'll come to the hole, fall in like they're doing right now, get traps for a while. They'll never go this way, but if they do, they'll get stuck right here and not be able to move because they don't have a digger, or at least most of them don't have a digger. So yeah, that's the plan anyway. My first victim had a Spaz 12, which is a shotgun, in case you don't know. And she got owned. You can actually set these, uh, these diggers to auto-dig, but the NPC, or not the NPC, the, uh, the AI is not very good at it. <laughs> They'll just kind of wander around and get stuck on walls and stand there and stare at nothing, and etc. They're kind of fail like that. So it's best to just dig yourself, basically. Oh, second and third victim. <laughs> the the robot the robot soldier that's down there, he fell on the other victim and killed her. And then my machine gun turrets took his legs off. <laughs> he's toast. Yep, he's toast. Poor soldier guy. Actually that was not a robot, that was a human soldier. He's the armored soldier, so it makes him kind of look like a robot. Look at those three just stuck there. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and drop a bomb on them. It has to be done. Uh, no, I don't want a soldier light. Thank you, game. Uh, these right here are your choices for what you want to drop things in. With the dropship will fly things in. The rocket will float things in. This is a different dropship. Uh, these will float things in as well, but they float and can fly away at the end, the rockets. I usually use the drop crate because it's cheap and it works, basically. So, yeah. Uh, where are... Bombs. Napalm. Oh, they got out. That's not good. They got out too quickly. And we'll do drop crate. <coughs> Well, this is going to kind of be a waste for one guy, but whatever. I don't care. I want to napalm someone. So I'm going to do it. Looks like a assault rifle. No, it's a shotgun. A shotgun person made it down there. Boom! <laughs> there was a napalm. He's dead. And then the napalm rains fiery debris all over the place, and it catches people on fire. Yeah, see, he's on fire. He's burning. <laughs> you gotta love napalm. Shotgun lady is now dead. I'm pretty sure that was a Mia. Like my digger over here. Keyword being was. Dummy soldier just dropped down with a nailer pistol and a digger. But he's dead before he could do anything. He's trying to shoot he's trying to shoot my MG turret, but the little overhang here is blocking his shots. <laughs> so he couldn't even damage him. Anyways, back to digging. Doing what I do. I've got enough money to go ahead and set up my other digger over there. Hopefully, uh, they have not destroyed my my uh, my weapon that I dropped. We'll see. Okay. Well, that was 30 minutes, so that was episode one. Uh, in episode two, we'll catch back up right here where I am, and we'll do some more of this little level right here. I'll see you guys next time.